The fools thought they could keep their plan a secret. They thought they could turn the killer symbiote known as Venom into a goody super agent by attaching him to a decorated officer named Flash Thompson. Well, two can play at that game. And now that the wizard has captured Carnage, the world will soon be introduced to a better type of agent. An agent of evil. An agent of the wizard. Granted, there were a few snares. Cletus Cassidy has apparently been lobotomized, which makes controlling his mind impossible. That would have been a helpful tip going in instead of a painful lesson on the way out. But you live and you learn. Oh, and despite him having a top secret document, it doesn't exactly explain how they turned Venom into a super agent. But Wizard has the utmost faith he will succeed. Within Wizard's secret lair, somewhere within New York City, both Wizard and Claw plan their next move. Without having the ability to control Cassidy directly, Wizard proposes that he only need to attempt to control the symbiote's brain instead. Then, we will create the Frightful Four's most superior member by perfecting what the government did with Venom here. Wizard hands Claw a number of classified documents, one of which has a photo with the words Agent Venom written on the top of it. Claw examines the picture and immediately states, This is a photo of Black Tarantula. What? Oh, I. Wizard becomes furious and snatches the photo from his partner before crumpling it up and throwing it on the ground. It's a placeholder, you idiot! I just said it was a damn top secret project! How am I supposed to have a photo of him? You think this means I'm slipping? That I'm not on my game? Well, let me tell you something. I am about to perform the single greatest act of my life. I don't need to waste my time on clerical details. Besides, this version of the Frightful Four will have plenty of mental backup. At that moment, a man in a wheelchair arrives and asks, Am I interrupting? Wizard approaches the gentleman and says, Not at all, Dr. Malice. Your timing is impeccable. Claw, this is Dr. Carl Malice, a genius surgeon I've recruited to assist with the operation, to sculpt our new carnage to our liking. I believe he will make a wonderful addition to our team. Also, I needed a fourth for the name to make sense. The universe hasn't been kind to the good doctor. He got involved with the wrong crowd and they paid him back by placing him in that chair. Out of reach, I'm afraid, of even his own surgical abilities. But you know what they say about karma. When someone screws with you, you pay it forward. Wizard proceeds to approach the unconscious body of Cletus Cassidy, which he currently has tied up with chains under the constant bombardment of sonic devices specifically made to stall the symbiote within him. Now, let us begin, shall we? I believe I owe someone a beat down. Lower the platform, he instructs Claw. Only this time, I'm coming for the alien symbiote brain. Aren't I? Carnage. Unchain him. Claw follows Wizard's instructions, and it is followed by one more order. Turn off the sonic cages. Claw pulls a lever which ceases the sonic bombardment and the symbiote begins to pour out of Cassidy's skin. And now, dear Carnage, 
Prepare to be my servant. The reddened, blood-like tendrils begin to surround Cletus Cassidy, and once again, he is transformed into Carnage. At once, Carnage runs towards Wizard and begins to attack the villain. Wizard begins to yell out in pain. Claw does nothing but watch. Mother of God, help him! Dr. Malice tells Claw, but Wizard tells the both of them that this is his fight. He continues to take a beating from the monster while attempting to stop the beast using only his mental prowess, trying his hardest to keep Carnage's focus. Do it! Make me earn it! Carnage lifts the wizard up to examine what even it would have to believe is a strange man and once again bears its fangs. Wizard then catches Carnage off guard by sneakily using his dual gauntlets to fire off a number of close range bullets in order to get the upper hand. Carnage falls to the ground momentarily before leaping back on its feet. In its rage, Carnage begins to transform. It morphs itself in order to eat the wizard whole, its teeth now the size of kitchen knives. At last, Claw steps forward. His right arm transforms into a sonic cannon and he fires off another sonic attack which easily dispatches Carnage, leaving the monster unable to move until it withdraws back into Cassidy and he falls to the floor, unconscious. This is my monster to tame. No! Screams Wizard, putting a stop to Claw. I won't have another of my creations taken from me. Not another one. Not like my Bentley. Not like my boy. You'll help me, won't you, son? Look at you. You've gotten so big. Dr. Malice watches Wizard limp away and looks to Claw, asking, What the hell have I gotten myself into? History in the making, Dr. Malice. There's something you should know, Claw. Rumor has it that the last time Wizard tried to take back his son, Black Bolt punished him by doing something to his mind, screwing with his electrons triggering some sort of dementia that would render him harmless. The problem is, there's a fine line between mad genius crazy and I'm losing my mind crazy. And I can't tell where we stand. Have you witnessed any signs of dementia? Claw looks down at the ground and sees the crumbled photo of the black tarantula mislabeled Agent Venom and replies, No. Dr. Malice continues, Don't get me wrong. It takes a lunatic to come up with this plan. And if it works, we'll all be sitting pretty. But if this is all just a delusional idea from a sick person, we need to get the hell out of here right now. All the while, Wizard continues to limp forward in order to pick up his fallen helmet. Rest assured, Doctor, both my plan and my intellect are very much intact, as is my hearing, thank you very much. So, let me be clear, you are free to go if you wish, but Keep in mind, I will succeed. And it's in your best interest to be here when I do. Because you know what they say. Whatever doesn't kill you will come back again until it does. Now, let's try this again. The next few attempts go just about as well as the first. Dr. Malice tries to reason with Wizard that this isn't working. They need to stop. They have tried four times now 
and each time it nearly kills him. No, Wizard snaps. It will work. It has to. Why can't I control his mind? The doctor tells Wizard. With all respect, there are three geniuses in this room. And two of them say that they need to forget this plan. Wizard looks over to Claw and asks, Is that true, Bentley? Has my own DNA forsaken me? Claw stutters back. I'm... I'm Claw. I... I know who you are, you moron. I was talking to myself. Why can't my brain crack this? What am I doing wrong? You're attempting the impossible. Dr. Malice waves a folder full of files in the air. According to these files, Venom Symbiote was not attached to the host's DNA. That means they could put it on whoever they wanted. But Cletus Cassidy has the symbiote flowing through his bloodstream. It's part of him. So, unless you can transfer the symbiote to someone whose brain is actually working, you will never be able to control this beast. Think, damn it. Think. There must be something we're missing. They took a stupid symbiote and stuck it on an average man. Below average, even. He's handicapped for crying out loud. What? Dr. Malice asks quietly. Doctor, that's it! We need someone's mind to control. And your generous contribution to science is going to secure the Bentley Whitman legacy. Prepare him for the transfusion, Wizard orders Claw before walking away. Claw looks down at Dr. Malice without a single change of expression. Wait, what? Claw, listen to him. This proves it. He is crazy. All he cares about is his stupid family. Surely, this is becoming clear to you as well. Claw pauses, looks towards the wizard, and back at Dr. Malice. I won't lie, doctor. I have noticed something. More than a few times now, he's recruited me into his frightful four. And each time, he's grown a little more insane. Most recently, he constructed this new sonic arm. Not just for me, but so I might act as an extension of himself. Over the years, he's both cloned me and brought me back from the dead so that I could continue to do his bidding. So yes, something has become clear. I am his family. Claw punches Dr. Malice hard enough to knock him out of his wheelchair and onto the floor. Claw then drags the doctor by his foot to the operating table. Please, I'm a cripple! Wizard pulls out a syringe full of red liquid and begins to flick it, preparing for injection. No need to remind us, doctor. That's the sole reason we're doing this. You are crazy! Quiet! Claw orders, elbowing the doctor in his nose, breaking it and causing blood to pour out. Claw proceeds to fasten the metal locks to keep the doctor in place, and Dr. Malice begins to cry out, Help me! Please! This is madness! Begin the transfusion, Wizard says gleefully, as he injects the doctor with a syringe. Stop! What will your son think? He will think I am a god. But more importantly, what will you think, doctor, when I've proven you and everyone else who doubted me wrong? 
Because we will no longer be equals, my friend. I will be your lord, your master, your superior.